So let's look at another example. And I've highlighted the abstract nouns in red. Environmental stress elicits rapid and profound responses in plants designed for protection, avoidance, or progeny survival through changes in conditions. Many of the pathways that participate in these adaptive responses are influenced or controlled by epigenetic variations in the cell. Reprogramming of the methylome can produce changes that are transmitted through the gamete, perhaps a key capacity to predispose the next generation for enhanced stress response. So in my mind, that's a pretty abstract passage. It takes a lot of thinking to really understand what's going on in that passage. And it's because of all these abstract nouns that are being used. So how would I rework this? For each sentence, what I did was I looked first for the main verb, and then I looked for the subject that went with that main verb. So in the first sentence, the main verb is elicits, and the subject was environmental stress. So there's no agent there. We don't know who or what is being elicited by environmental stress. And elicit is kind of an abstract kind of verb, and it's eliciting responses. What are these responses? So I changed the beginning of the sentence to plants as the subject and respond as the verb. So plants respond to environmental stress in rapid and profound ways. So that's more concrete, right? We know what is responding, what they're responding to, and how they're responding. Now, what about the second part of the first sentence? So I've ended the sentence much sooner than the original, and I made the second part into its own sentence. So it says, as conditions change, Plants protect themselves, avoid stress, or ensure that their progeny survive. So I've taken this word protection, which is an abstract noun, and I've changed it to an active verb, which is protect. Similarly, I've taken the abstract noun avoidance and changed it to the verb avoid. And I changed survival to survive. So protection, avoidance, and survival are nouns that are formed from these root verbs. So we change them back to the verbs, and we're going to, you know, again, introduce an agent into this sentence. So I'll read it a second time. As conditions change, plants protect themselves, avoid stress, or ensure that their progeny survive. So I've taken the first sentence, made it into two sentences. Now let's look at the original second sentence. The verb there is are, and the subject is many of the pathways that participate in these adaptive responses. So we have two abstract nouns in the subject of the sentence. So what I'm going to do to modify this sentence is look for a more active verb and look for a more concrete subject. So I'm going to change it to plants adapt to stress using pathways that are influenced or controlled by methylation of DNA. I took this kind of vague epigenetic variations in the cell and I changed it to something more specific, which is methylation of DNA. So that's really what the author is referring to. When he or she says epigenetic variations, they're referring to something that's not being stated and that something that's not being stated is methylation of DNA. The third sentence of the original says, reprogramming of the methylome can produce changes that are transmitted through the gamete, perhaps a key capacity to predispose the next generation for enhanced stress response. So, you know, excellent information there, but let's figure out a way to make it more concrete. The abstract nouns are reprogramming, methylome, changes, capacity, and response. The verb is can produce. I'm going to think about what this sentence is about. It's about the methylome and the methylome changing. And then something that is changed is being passed on to the next generation. So I need to think about what is it that's actually changing that's being passed on. And by reading further into this paper, what I found is that it is this methylated DNA. So let's take it and make that the concrete noun and the subject. Uh, I've cut out some of this text that 
really doesn't seem to be necessary once we understand the concrete nature of what's being transmitted. Methylated DNA can be transmitted through the gamete, perhaps a key capacity to predispose the next generation to respond more robustly to stress. The edits that I made took the abstract nouns and changed them into concrete nouns. And in doing so, I changed the sentence structure around a bit. A lot of times what will have to happen is that the verb changes and the subject changes as you're replacing these abstract nouns with concrete nouns. And that makes the sentences usually shorter and definitely much more direct and more readable. I didn't remove all of the abstract nouns. Some of them are still in place and I've left those highlighted in red. The goal is not to get rid of every single abstract noun. It's just to get rid of excessive abstraction. Let's look at another example. This one says, burial resulted in consistent measures of diversity with increases in richness and decreases in evenness compared to surface systems during decay. All right, so whenever you see something like increases in X or decreases in Y, you can always change that around to X increased, Y decreased. So you're doing two things there. You're getting one fewer word and you're putting an agent with an active verb. Increases is an abstract noun. Why not change that to an active verb? And so that's the approach I took in this sentence. Here's my suggested revision for this sentence. Burial resulted in consistent di diversity with increased richness and decreased evenness compared to vertebrates decaying on the surface. So in addition to that increases in and decreases in being changed, I also just took out the word measures of because it's not necessary. The scientists me did measure diversity but the result is not the measurement of diversity. The result is the diversity itself. So we just take out the measures of entirely. So burial resulted in consistent diversity. And then the last part of the sentence where it says compared to surface systems during decay, we have two abstract nouns there. So systems and decay. So we can take decay and make that into a verb, decaying. Vertebrates were decaying. And we don't need to talk about surface systems. Again, that's the authors thinking about their process. Uh, and what they were actually talking about is when animals are decaying on the surface of the ground or when they're buried. And so we're going to talk about it in those concrete terms. So again, burial resulted in consistent diversity with increased richness and decreased evenness compared to vertebrates decaying on the surface. Now I mentioned before that as a side effect of replacing these abstract nouns, you're probably going to change other parts of the sentences as well. And what you're going to find is that as you convert these abstract nouns to concrete nouns, you're usually going to replace the passive verbs with the active verbs. Using passive verbs can make sentences read in the passive voice. And the passive voice is not as readable as the active voice, and it's usually longer. So we want to change these passive verbs. What are the passive verbs? They usually take a state of being verb and combine it with another verb form. Some examples are was conducted, were calculated, is measured, are being collected, now, keep in mind that scientific writing is going to have a lot of passive verbs, and it's not going to be practical or possible to get rid of all of the passive verbs. And I'm not suggesting that you do that, but I'm saying look at them carefully and think about it. Can I, can I make this passive verb into an active verb? When you can do it, do it. That's a good thing. It's going to make the writing better. Now, the exception is in the materials and methods section, the passive voice is preferred in that section by almost all authors. And so I'm not suggesting that you do this kind of editing in that section. Let's look at an example of getting rid of a passive verb. The sentence says, the subsequent discovery that baculovirus is capable of infecting mammalian cells has resulted in numerous novel applications ranging from basic cell biology tools to potential gene therapy vectors. Now the passive verb is, is capable of infecting. 
So what can we do with that to make this sentence more active? We can just simply change it to can infect. So instead of saying is capable of infecting, baculovirus can infect mammalian cells. And uh, I couldn't help myself. I changed numerous novel applications to many applications and saved one word and got rid of a polysyllable word. Let's look at two more examples. Here are two original sentences on this slide. In bacteria, various formaldehyde detoxification pathways exist. So exist is a state of being verb. The second example, this axis was explained mainly by variables related to flower size and pollinator attraction and pollinator efficiency. So do you have some ideas for how to edit these sentences? Here are my suggestions. Let's give the first sentence an agent and get rid of exist. Bacteria detoxify formaldehyde using various pathways. It has the same information, but this is a much more active construction. So for the second sentence, if you wanted to make it more active, what you could do is just flip the order of the sentence. So instead of having the subject verb object as this axis was explained by variables, you could say variables explained this axis. So you make the variables into the agent of the sentence. Now, you might not necessarily want to make that change. It depends on the flow of the paragraph and what you want to emphasize. But if you did want to make it more active, that's a way that it could be done.